Harrison, just the, tell me again a little bit about um, how you ended up at Penn. Uh, I ended up in Penn the summer before my senior year. Um, AU tournaments, the, the coaches, they were out recruiting. Uh, I guess they received a tip from recruiting um, scout there about my GPA, so they came out and saw me play. And they liked what they saw, so they were started recruiting, recruiting me heavily after that. Throughout that whole summer, they were at every game and, you know, made an offer to me. You know, it wasn't quote-unquote athletic scholarships because it was Ivy League, but, you know, offered what they could and recruited me. And I ended up, went on my visit in October, I think October of my senior year. And, you know, I loved it, just everything they had to offer from, you know, academics, you know, it was second to none being in the Ivy League, um, the prestigious basketball program, and um, just being in West Philadelphia, you know, being in a big city, coming from Victorville, you know, that was a big deciding factor. Um, people don't know a whole lot about Ivy League basketball. They don't, uh, you know, see a whole a lot of it. You mentioned before, like it's not televised out here. But um, tell tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, Ivy League basketball and maybe what people don't know about it. Um, people don't know there's a lot of talent in the Ivy League. Um, there's, you know, it's a little bit more strategic type play. It's not as free flowing. A lot of, a lot of teams run the Princeton offense. A lot of backdoor cuts. Um, a lot of screens. I guess they, the players shoot better in the Ivy League. But I think it's, it gets a bad rap because they just see it as oh, it's just the academics and it's not athletics. But they don't realize there's a lot of great players that have came out of the Ivy League and. Every Ivy League team plays a tough schedule, and everyone is battle tested. So, you know, like at Penn, we played North Carolina when they were number one both years, my freshman and sophomore year. Um, uh, now they can see Harvard. You know, the schedule they played um, this past season, the success they're having. But I think um, with the stories of Jeremy Lin and now Harvard this year, it should get a better rap. To, people should know that there's good players coming out of there. And you played against Jeremy Lin a couple of years. Um, tell me your impressions of him when you were when you were playing against him. I always thought he was a good player, but I didn't know he was going to be that good. Like he was, you know, at the time Cornell players were considered more of the top in the Ivy League. Ryan Whitman, Lewis Dale, um, and Harvard. They weren't that great of a team. They were good, but they weren't, you know, the upper echelon of Ivy League teams. And um, but apparently he worked on his game. He, you know, never stopped working, kept his faith, and now it's paying off. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, his, he, he has this uh, kind of reputation of being a real emotional kind of guy and pumping the team up and everything. Did you see much of that, or do you think this is just kind of uh, a new dimension to him? Um, I don't really – I didn't really pay attention to it. I don't know if I really remember. He might have been. Um, yeah, he might have been real emotional. I don't remember exactly, but you can definitely see his passion now. You know, it, it exudes in his whole body language when he's playing. But yeah, I don't remember when we were playing back then if he was that emotional. Yeah, cool.